40 after, low and to your right, inbound to the aircraft of the 82nd Airborne. Well, the jump platform of the 82nd Airborne, high and to your right. Uh, yeah. Oh. This is a remarkable aircraft developed by Lockheed. First flown back in the mid 1950s, and the uh, the order that came down from the Pentagon to Lockheed was build us an airplane that could act like a skyborne truck. Make it rugged, make it dependable, make it be able to get in and out of crappy strips. There's the 82nd Airborne. Okay, all you people with great eyes, start to count. Exiting out that rear door, which also doubles as a ramp, extends down to the ground for driving up vehicles, jeeps and tanks, and then also for a quick load of skydivers. Not only a quick load on board, but getting out in a short period of time, a massive lot of guys heading back for that wide opening in the back, just merely jumping off of that ramp. Doesn't have to worry about a door. Four, five, or six wide can come out. Now that is an invasion. You know, it gets quiet out there under canopy. They can hear conversation, they can hear music. So up and down the flight line, let's applaud and yell and whistle like crazy. Louder than that. Let's get rowdy. Come on, let's let them hear it. Who can whistle? The mighty 82nd Airborne under those round canopies. And oh, I cringe because those are the ones you duck and roll and bend your knees and roll your shoulder and you get down over the turf. They still do a great job, but combat-ready troops with a full load bring those parachutes in. Try to slow them up just before the descent and roll to a stop. That is a lot of silk. Hit the silk, as they used to say. We've been spoiled in air shows because we don't see the round canopies that much anymore. We see the square ram air canopies that have so much efficiency, so much steering capability. So much and then Frank Ryder, flying to one of a kind, Auric XL monoplane. Co-sponsored this weekend on his North American tour. So we can gather up all of our details.